Have you ever seen the movie Black Swan and wondered how much work it took to how much work it took Natalie Portman to perfect her part? Have you ever seen the show Dancing with the Stars and wondered how much effort it took for the partners to be synchronized? Have you ever seen a music video where the dancers are perfectly choreographed and timed? Today's guest started as a student in tutus and ballet shoes, then competing in talent shows and teaching children how to move. She will share with us how she learned to shuffle hop step at a very young age, and she still finds passion off stage for dancing today. The Humanities Communication Arts Department at Norwalk Community College presents the new directors, the show that introduces you to television's future writers, directors, and personalities. And now join our host, Paula Lopez, to meet the next new director. Thank you for joining us for today's edition of the new directors. All of the people involved with this program are students in the television production course and are directing, switching, controlling audio, operating cameras, and acting as talents for the first time today. The guests you are about to meet are students who, when not on camera, are behind the scenes working hard to bring this program to you with as few mistakes as possible. Each student will write and direct four different productions. This program will give them the chance to talk about themselves, the productions they are planning, and give you the chance to get to know them and watch their progress throughout the semester. Our guest today is a person who found her passion at a very young age, dance. While most of us reserve some of our best dance moves for in the car or in front of the mirror, today's guest will discuss dance recitals, talent shows, and other exciting programs she was a part of. Now, I would like you to meet our guest today, Taylor Caldwell. Hi, Paula. Thank you for having me. So, Taylor, we know that you found your love for dancing at a very young age. Could you tell us more about how you started? When I was living in South Carolina, my mom had enrolled, or my parents had enrolled my sister and I into several different dance, or dance courses, which I have videos and photos of. However, I promised that my sister would not show up in any of these, so she's not there. Um, at that age, however, I was taking jazz, tap dance, ballet, and gymnastics. Here was, uh, I'm not even sure. It was called the Jack in the Box, and I don't have that outfit anymore because I gave it to my cousin. When I was in elementary school, the, the school held a talent show for grades three to five, and I competed every single year, or I was a, a part of it every single year. Um, in third grade, myself and three other of my friends uh, did a hilariously choreographed dance to Cotton Eye Joe, where I'm the only person who is not wearing blue for no apparent reason. In fourth grade, my friend ended up bailing on me last minute and I was left standing slash dancing on stage to Candy by Mandy Moore all by myself. In fifth grade, my friend and I did a dance to the Backstreet Boys. It was a song that no one really probably paid attention to on the album. It's that one that you skip because you don't like it. <laughs> it ended up being that one. Although I wasn't taking uh, any dance classes between the ages of 13 and 16, I was working at a local camp. It was a day camp, so every day I was working with groups of kids ages 5 to 12, and I was teaching them how to dance. It was either the Cotton Eye Joe or the Electric Slide or um, the Cha Cha Slide, that was also another one, or the Chicken Dance. Could you tell us why you decided to take the TV production course? My interest in TV production actually began when I was a senior in high school. I took journalism, but the journalism department had three different divisions. It had newspaper, uh, the RAM Review, the website, or um, the, t or the, or the RAM Review, which is the TV production part of it, which is the part that I was on. And my teacher, Roman Sobolski, was actually a teacher. He, he was a student here before he was a teacher there. So he took all the same classes that I'm taking now. However, what I really wanted to learn was more about um, the creative part of filming. Because when I took it, I was only learning interviewing skills. However, while I did learn about headroom and nose room and the rule of thirds for an interview or for filming at all, I also wanted to learn more about uh, sequencing or um, 
writing a storyboard to help create a more creative project. What are some of the most useful things you have learned in this course? I would have to say that learning more about loading and editing things into Avid was probably one of the more important things that I learned. Um, typically, while I might have been looking for an easy way out in learning how to focus something, I was glad that we were taught and encouraged to use manual focus for all of our shots. Taylor, tell us about the productions you created for this course. The learning project, the action sequence, New England seasonal project, and the Orange project. Uh, well, my learning project was definitely a learning project and a complete disaster. Um, it was a little nerve-wracking trying all of the new filming techniques. Even though it was just a learning project, I was still skeptical about filming it anyway. However, I did learn certain techniques such as the poor man's dissolve, the use of a 180 line in a conversation such as this one, the shift focus, framing, and other important filming techniques for TV, which were used in other stories later. Next was my action sequence, which came out a little bit different than I had originally planned. While I had about eight minutes of regular filming, it was a little disappointing that I only had about 33 seconds of a total story. The original plan was that he was actually going to be purchasing something from the machine rather than slamming his fist on the machine and miraculously getting something anyway, which I still don't know how it works, but that was my story. <laughs> the New England seasonal project was extremely hard to film because we had very bipolar weather at that time where it was either dumping 26 inches of snow or melting it all away in overnight. Um, however, I was most pleased with how this one came out because I had so much raw footage to work with that I was able to cut it down to a three to four minute story. I was most pleased with the repetition of shape and the lines of grace that happened to show up in several shots. Last was my orange project, which I ended up filming two different times with four different people in two different locations entirely. Although it was frustrating to film, it was probably the most fun because I got to write my own story and have a storyboard to help me along the way. And I got to pick the location and all of that. Now, I know that you had one project that you felt was your best. Tell us about it while we watch a sample of the video with the music you selected. While I probably had the most fun filming my orange project, I would have to say that my winter project was definitely one of my best. I was, I was overall pleased with it because it had, so, it had showed so many It just came out very well. However, the most important thing that was probably a part of this was the music that I ended up choosing because it portrayed everything that well. So let's listen for a minute. the variety of things you learned in this course. What was the most interesting and important skill you learned and how will you put it to use? While I had considered myself relatively tech savvy, I think I had to learn everything about Avid in order to learn anything else about film and editing. However, the most important thing that we learned was probably when we walked into the studio and had to learn each of these ro uh, had to learn how to do each of these things using CG or Avid or learning how to roll the teleprompter and all of that. However, it was also the cooperation and the communication between your team. If I ever end up in a TV-related job, I would hope that everything that I learned so far would definitely put to good use in one of those jobs. Today, we got to meet someone who, even though has retired from the States on the Polka dot polyester customs, still continues to dance today. I would like to thank our guest, Taylor Colway, 
for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Paula. We hope you enjoy meeting some of the television's future directors, and we hope you will continue to join us each week to watch our progress. Thank you, and good day. So I completely bombed that last part about the Witcher project. This has been The New Directors, with your host, Paula Lopez, directed by Joe Gonzalez, and I'm your announcer, Lauren Stevens. The New Directors is a Norwalk Community College student production.